Hi, my name is CJ Leung and welcome to the first How to Play Dungeons and Dragons video. Over the course of a few weeks, we will go through different aspects of this game. We will start with an introduction, go through the basics, after which you will be able to join a game as a complete beginner. Then I am going to cover slightly more advanced rules before we go through character creation. Followed by leveling up, multi-classing and where to go from there. Dungeons & Dragons is a tabletop role-playing game created by Gary Gagex and Dave Arneson. It was first published in 1974, and since then subsequent editions modified and tweaked the rules of the game until we have the fifth and most current edition that's being played around the world right now. Some of you watching this video may have played earlier editions and want to get back into the game. Some of you may have seen Dungeons & Dragons referenced in an episode of The Simpsons, Community and Netflix mystery horror series Stranger Things. Then, there are those of you who have never heard of Dungeons & Dragons ever. Just so that everyone is on the same page, I'm going to start from the very beginning. What is Dungeons & Dragons? To the uninitiated, Dungeons & Dragons, or D&D for short, is a tabletop role-playing game. It is a game played using your imagination and a set of rules and dice. Usually set in a fantasy world, the players play as characters of various races, background, or occupational classes. So, you can be an elven wizard sage, human fighter soldier, dwarven cleric acolyte, and any other available combinations. Your goal as players can be as simple as defeating an evil dragon, going to the end of the world to retrieve a magical artifact, or even negotiate peace between warring kingdoms. But along the way, there are many challenges that you need to overcome. To set the challenges, referee the game, and wrap everything in a coherent narrative, someone has to take on the role of a dungeon master. The dungeon master is not a player, he's the storyteller, the one who expositions the world the players are in. He also controls the monsters and other characters the players may come across on their adventure or NPCs which stands for non-playable characters. He may use an adventure module, which is a pre-written adventure manual bought from stores or create the adventure himself. Other way, he is tasked to adjudicate the rules fairly and to entertain the players. And psst, just to let all you new players out there know, not all dungeon masters play nice. <laughs> the players control their player characters, or PCs. The details of their characters are recorded in the character sheet like this. What you see here is the character sheet for 5th edition D&D. We will go through all the different sections through the video series, so let's not worry about this right now. While the player character's race and background provide bonuses to a character's makeup, the class distinguishes the gameplay experience. Whether you are an elven or tiefling wizard of any background, you still cast spells. Likewise, a human or a half-orc fighter are masters of martial weaponry, though half-orcs are naturally stronger than humans. Basically, class determines how you play, and your race and backgrounds give you bonuses. Now, before we go further, let me draw your attention to this set of dice. These are the dice we use to play D&D. This is a 20-sided die, or D20 for short. It is the most important die in the set because we use it 90% of the time for almost everything. The other dice, like the 12-sided, 10-sided, 8-sided, 6-sided, and the 4-sided dice, or D12, D10, D8, D6, and D4 respectively, are usually used for damage calculation or other rare mechanics. Some people have problem reading the 4-sided die. That's because there are two style of die prints, one with the result at the bottom and the other at the top. You see this? If somehow you are having difficulty reading the dice, just spin the die around a few times and see which number keep appearing at the same upright position. And then there's also this, the decimal die. Rolled in combination with a 10-sided die, it will create a number between 0 to 99. It is rarely used, but I'm letting you know so that you don't throw away your decimal die, just in case you need it. During the course of a game, there are three broad categories of activities your character may be involved in. Social interaction, exploration, and combat. For example, if your character accepts a quest from the castle guard to drive off a pack of goblins that's been infesting Mayflower Hill, that is a form of social interaction. So is persuading the guard to give you more details, coercing him to lend you his equipment, and lie about which inn you're staying in in case he needs to find you. Through the information you gather, you know that there is a hidden path in a nearby forest that can lead you to the back of the hill unseen. It is the perfect way to launch a surprise attack on the goblins. Traversing the dense forest, enduring the heat, jumping over a pit, stealing a companion's ration, sneaking past sentries, anything that doesn't involve talking or fighting are considered as exploration. And combat? Well, it's kinda self-explanatory. However, in a real game, things may not go as smoothly as what we saw. Things like deceiving the guards and jumping over the pit are challenges that you need to overcome. 
To successfully complete the challenge, the DM will ask you to roll a d20 and add the relevant skill bonus or penalty your character has. Your score will be compared against the challenge's difficulty class and you succeed if you match the target number or higher. The difficulty class can be revealed by the dungeon master or kept hidden for dramatic purpose. He may just tell you that it's white, but seems doable to those who are athletically inclined. Similarly, in combat, you also roll d20 to attack enemies and the target number is their armor class. If your roll in addition to your bonus matches their armor class number or higher, then you get to damage them. Now, you get to use the other dice type. The damage is dependent on the type of weapon you use and whatever applicable modifier you have. Our fighter here is currently wielding a longsword, so he gets to roll a d8. Because he has plus 3 strength modifier, he gets to add 3 points to his damage. In this case, our fighter does 7 points of damage because he rolled a 4 and we add his 3 points damage modifier. Just remember this pattern. First, do an attack roll to try to hit, then roll damage if you do. Roll to hit, then damage. Roll to hit, then damage. Adventuring and combat are massive topics which require their own videos, so let's leave it for another time. But those videos are coming, so don't worry. Also, when you are playing an actual game, your experience may not be so uniformly structured. You might have failed to intimidate the god and start a fight, or you might even persuade the goblins to surrender when your side is obviously winning. As your characters triumph over enemies and complete quests, they are rewarded with experience points. Once their experience points reach a certain threshold, they would level up, becoming more powerful and gain new features. The D&D classes maxes out at level 20, but many adventure module campaigns end at around level 15 or even lower, so don't overplan your character before speaking to your DM. A session of D&D can last as long as you want, but according to my experience, 2-4 to four hours is a good length. That sounds like a long time, but once you really get into a game, time just flies so quickly you wouldn't even realize it. A campaign is an overarching story made up of multiple sessions. If you think of sessions as episodes in a TV series, then a campaign is the equivalent of a season. If you are interested in what I've been talking about so far, then consider picking up the player's handbook. The 5th edition cover looks like this. It's got all the information you need as a player but it's quite a lengthy read. So you can watch my video series to give yourself a head start and see me cover major gameplay topics. The video series will be divided into a few parts. Intro, this is the video you're watching right now. Abilities and skills. Combat and saving throw. Adventuring and equipment. Class features and spell casting. Character creation. Level up and customization. To accompany you along the journey, I've created a couple of characters. Serio, the human fighter. And Larry, the high elf wizard. We will use their character sheets to better illustrate the mechanics of the game. You can find their character sheets down in the description. By the way, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and press the bell button if you want to be notified of future releases, and comment below to tell me what else you would like to see covered. So, until next time, CJ over and out.